it's a very hard entry point for every coach to find a good mentor and to find somebody that's going to put him on the right path. And I think David Thorpe is probably the, the really exact person that you wanted to work under. You know what? I, I got really lucky um, to not only work under him, but the way that he was able to teach me, you know, so like he, he would really not just utilize me. Okay. Rebound screen, do this. He would teach me how to coach. Yeah. And he would consistently coach me up from the way that I dressed to the way that I looked to even my attitude. I mean, I, you know, I, I was a high school coach, became a head high school coach and, uh, kind of built up the high school program. And so high school coaches within our area weren't doing much for their high school players. And of course I was doing a bunch of player development stuff with them. We were playing all the time in the summer, but I went through and I built out an email database of every division one, division two, division three, NAI school, junior college in the country, head coach, assistant coaches. And I started creating highlight tapes for all of our players, uh, basically three, four times a year and sending out to the level that they could play it. You know, my entire goal was not to win high school games, but was to send guys to college. Mm -hmm. And as a result, a bunch of players started uh, transferring in for me. And uh, we had a lot of success. And at like 22, I was arrogant. Um, I was more so arrogant in the work ethic, the people around me. You know, I just couldn't understand why they didn't work harder for their players. And then, of course, because all these players were transferred in for me, I was recruiting them, which wasn't necessarily true. We were just sending guys to college, so other players wanted to come in. Yeah. And, uh, you know, to be able to have a mentor one day, you know, he took me out to lunch and he sat me down and, and he's like, why are you so arrogant? Why are you being a jerk? Just because you outwork people, just because you're having success doesn't give you the right to act like that. Doesn't give you the right to be that type of person. And, uh, you know, so I, I was very fortunate that at a young age, I had guys like him, Stan Jones, who's the associate head coach at, at Florida State, Kevin Sutton, who at the time was running Montbert Academy and was one of the top high school coaches in the country. He's now at Kansas State. I was lucky at a young age to not only have coaches invest in me and to help me grow, but to tell me the truth, you know, to say, hey, you, you know what? You got to dress better. You got to change this. You've got to do this. And, um, you know, I think that's oftentimes missed for young coaches is being able to have somebody it's, it's like players, right? Players need somebody to tell them the truth. And so do young coaches that are trying to really develop and grow. And, and I had that in, in those guys. That's like uh, mentorship is so important in every aspect of life, but especially in coaching, when you said like, you have to have the right person being able to communicate the right things to you and being able to communicate them in the right way uh that you understand them as well you know that you also like can personify personify what he's really trying to get across and that's um that's very lucky <laughs> just to keep keep it keep it as simple as possible and having the right people around because i've seen also um in different cultures in europe there's different ways of of how coaches get brought up but I also see of how uh, a lot of coaches head coaches don't allow their assistant coaches or other um coaches and the staff to do anything they want to control the whole process and then raises the question of how do you develop the assistant coach into a head coach besides that just him being smart enough to absorb and to learning not by doing but learning by seeing and observing and making notes and then when it's your turn then you kind of like getting thrown into cold water it, besides the fact you know like except the exception would be where he brings you along right and he gives you like some, some little tools along the way to 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 learn as you go and then it's it corrects you on the side and gives you kind of like pushes you in the right direction i think it's it's a much more useful way of growing growing coaches instead of uh, keeping them down and then giving them once when it's their turn then all of a sudden they have to be able to perform on on stage you know like and it's not fair i think to a lot of coaches i got really lucky i mean i i still remember just one of the coolest days you know, I'm 20 years old. I've been around for less than a month. 
and Coach Thorpe was was teaching previously something about selling everything with your eyes, face, and shoulder, right? So it's like when you make a move, like really sell, use the craft. And he was teaching a jab step to Donis Haslam. And I went over to him, I was like, coach, I was like, should, should we be selling the jab step with our eyes, face, and shoulder? And uh, went back, he's like, he's like, guys, Ryan had a great point. We got to make sure we're selling, you know, our jab step with our eyes, face, and shoulder. Like I've been there a month, you know, like, <laughs> like, you know, I'm sitting there and like, Udonis is like looking at me and he's like, Ryan had a great point. And what, what he did, right, obviously he knew that, like, you know, he's, David Thorpe is brilliant and his attention to detail is sick. And he knew that, but what he was doing was empowering me to the players. And, you know, that helped, that helped create a lot of leverage for me with those guys, the way that he phrased it, the way that he empowered me and also what he did, which, which was really smart, especially if you hire good people, right? It's, it's a way to create buy-in, you know, it's like, obviously David Thorpe owns everything in terms of it's the gym, it's his company, it's his players. They're going there to see him, but by giving me that small ownership, you're like, I got to work my butt off for this guy. Like, you know, and, and I did. And he kept coaching me up. He kept empowering me along the way. And as I got older, I'd be like, all right, Ryan, you, you run the workout today. I'm going to sit and watch. And he would, he likes to sit and watch the players like from a different point of view. But then also after the workout, He'd be like, hey, you're talking too much. I, I was super fortunate from 20 until I got the G League job that he just coached me up all the time, you know, for 15, 16 years. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, he gave you street cred, basically. It was amazing. You know, it was <laughs> like to be 20 years old and, you know, you're in the gym with like Kevin Martin, Udonis has them, and, you know, you, your, your eyes are big and you're learning. You know, it's like everything you thought, of course, at 20 years old, you, you think you actually know something about basketball. And then you're watching David Torp teach, and you're like, I know nothing about anything. <laughs> you know, and he gives you this credit. And, and it was, you know, I, I was super fortunate the way he treated me. And a lot of the coaches that I was able to work for, they were the same exact way. Like they really empowered me as an assistant, which allowed me to learn and to grow and exactly what you said. I mean, to, to be able to experiment, to lead a drill, to fail, you know, and, and to then have a chance to improve and get better.